House of Representatives, and it is even worse uh, than it looks. Uh, but nevertheless, we have all of you in the strength here this I will move quickly in terms of my comments because you want to hear also from uh, a stalwart on the issues that you so care so deeply about. And that's my colleague, Nita Lowy, from New York. So we've had the pleasure of sitting on the Appropriations Committee for a number of years. It seems like it's not, it's not, it's not forever. We want to continue to be there because it's a, it's a great place to be. Um, and and uh, Norm was saying this. Head Start's one of the two American success stories. Uh, uh, it's a striking example of how dedicated teachers, with the help of a smart federal investment, can really enrich the lives of all of our citizens. It's a cornerstone of our effort to close that achievement gap, to combat poverty, and to provide all Americans with the opportunity to be able to thrive. So to see so many of you here today is really gratifying. Uh, and to the activists, the advocates, the experts uh, from the National Head Start Association, from Head Start programs across the country, we thank you. We thank you for the work that you do, because of the work that you do, nearly a million kids a year, a million kids a year, and 27 million preschoolers over the past 45 years have received that crucial leg up in early education that's helped them to thrive. I don't have to tell you how urgent the work of Head Start is in the current economy. For many parents, the opportunities that they're able to provide for their children have been devastated uh, by the continuing crisis in the labor market. And with resources that are stretched to the limit, kids are not getting the attention on the care that they deserve to have today. And you've got state, yes. States, municipalities, wherever you are, budget shortfalls. They have been forced to cut back. Social services have been cut across the board. Early education programs, the kinds of programs our most vulnerable children rely on. And so in this environment, it is all the more important to make those investments at the federal level that are going to provide that path for our kids to thrive. And over his three years, President Obama has been a strong supporter of early childhood education. And I hope to hear him continue that support strongly tonight and pledge that we are going to provide that opportunity for our youngsters to be able to succeed and make their way. That is our <laughs> And again, you heard Norm, but you are here. Do not ever underestimate the value of advocacy today, like what you are doing here today. Having smart and passionate and knowledgeable men and women, they show up at your office and gently but astutely explain the benefits of programs like Head Start. It makes a difference, my friends. Again, it makes a difference. So, you know, take a look. I'll, read, I'll run through this quickly, but look what happened last year. Look what happened. At the beginning of the last session, Head Start was one of the many investments in families that the House majority aimed to cut. Had it been enacted, the original budget plan would have cut Head Start by over a million increase. 218,000 kids cut from the roads, uh, 60,000 classes closed, 55,000 teachers assistants would have lost their job. But because of you, because the advocates stood up and you said no, it is not going to happen. Of course, of course, until members got the message and the cuts did pass. In fact, 2012, the budget passed last month, increased funding for Head Start. You make a difference. Do it gently, astutely, but do not take no for an answer. left a grade behind to get in trouble with the law, they're more likely to go out to college and have professional careers, let's stand up today. Let us stand up today to make sure that there's a strong federal commitment to this program. Don't let them say no to you and talk about budget deficit. Yes, 
There is a budget deficit. We are in concert here on how to uh, do that. The point is where do you start? Let's start with the oil and gas subsidy. Let's start with the subsidies of the gas and get rid of those. Let us not start with our children. Let us not We have to push it, we have to make sure the resources are there so that it thrives and that it flourishes. You know, people, Nita and I have both had this experience with the chair, the former chair of the Appropriations Committee with David Oden. We've got so many of our colleagues who go to a Head Start Center, they take pictures with the kids, it's wonderful, and then they come here and they go to slash the program. Well, David Oden had a saying, he was like, they're just taking you know, they're just posing for holy pictures. Do not let them pose for holy pictures. You call them out. <laughs> they have been on these issues. There is nothing more powerful than hearing directly from the people that you represent. Your voice is greater than Nita's and mine and ours collectively because you represent their constituents, what they are doing, and you can make a difference in changing their minds. You know, quite hard. I know you that's in human nature. We're going to continue to do that. I can commit to you to be alone with myself. Everything, everything that we can do in order to be able to protect our nation's children and give them the opportunities that they need to succeed. Have a great day.